The Restrict Access feature in Excel is, in part, an online service. In other words, we have to sign up for what's called a Windows Live ID because what it wants to do is it wants to verify the user that you give permission to to access this workbook. It's not password protected, so unless they're actually specified by me as a user to access this workbook, they can't access it which is nice because if it's password protected you can run into problems where that one person who gets angry could actually give that password out to 20 other people and they can all have access to it. No, this is actually user restricted. So unless I give specific permission to a user then they can't have access to this. And there's three types of accesses that a user can have or I can assign a user to this workbook. The first is a read-only access, so they can just open it up and read the workbook. The second is what's called a change access, meaning that they can read, edit, and save this workbook, but only as another workbook. They can't overwrite the original workbook. And then finally, full control, which they can do anything. So to get this started, we want to set our Windows Live ID up, or what they call manage our credentials here. And you can do it from one of two places. You can click on either the Office logo button, come down to prepare to restrict permission, and go to manage credentials because we need to set it up before we can actually restrict the access and this managed credentials includes us signing on for again for this well currently it's a free trial service to verify that I am who I say I am and that other people who I give access to it can also verify them so again manage the credentials before I restrict the access or I can come up here and click on the review tab go to the changes group click on the protect workbook and go down to manage credentials gives me a little bit more information with this pop-up before I continue. This is about information rights management. In other words, I have information here that I have the right to manage and give access to certain people. And again, this is an online service, so it uses a server to authenticate the credentials of people who create, receive, or email with restricted permissions. And then for this free trial service, it outlines that we have to have a Windows Live ID because this is in part how they verify that the person who you want to have access to this workbook is who they say they are. And again, it's a free trial service, so if Microsoft wants to end this trial, recipients will have access to restricted documents and emails for at least three months longer. So again, don't know if they'll end it, but at least they have three months access. Finally, down below, do you want to continue and, and use this online service? I'm going to go ahead and say yes and click next. Okay, here's the key component. You have to sign up for a Windows Live ID because everything's done through the servers. When you sign up for this free trial service, Microsoft's going to verify that you are who you say you are and give you an ID. And then they're going to give ID for the other people who you want to have access to this workbook. So for me to set it up, I have to say yes. If no, then go ahead and select it and it'll give you a chance to set it up. Click next. It opens up a web page here. All you have to do is give them your email address, assign a password, have your secret questions and answers in case if you forget your password, and then go ahead and sign up. After you fill out the form and sign up, again, it will be based upon your email address and the password. Close out of here, come back with that information, say yes, I do have a Windows Live ID, click next, and go ahead and log in. With that email address and password, click sign in. And then it wants to know if you're using a private or public computer, like one at the library, I suppose, because if it's a public or shared computer, you don't want to leave the sensitive information on that computer, whether people can uh, be able to pick it apart and uh, log in as you. So it gives you for a limited time, and then it says, hey, please be sure to log off when you finish using this computer so it can erase things so nobody can come in and keep track of it. If it's a private computer, you'll have up to six months to use this. Go ahead and click I accept. It's private. Finally, it says it's completed the information. Your computer has been configured to create or use rights protected content. You can use this Windows Live ID to configure 25 more private computers. So I've got 25 more computers out there somewhere that if I want Bob in California to go ahead and have access to this workbook, I'll go ahead and configure this, send it to him, and part of the configuration is getting him to have a Windows Live ID where I can actually just go ahead and assign it to his email address and for him to have access to this, he's Again, got to set up his Windows Live ID, type in his email address, and then also that password, and then he can access this workbook. Click Finish. And then right here on the user, I want to set this workbook up again to restrict permissions for others to have access to. But in order for me to do this or to set this, I need to, of course, start with me and select myself and click OK. Now, if I go ahead and click Cancel out of this, in other words, I went ahead and I set up and I managed my credentials. I got the restrict permissions. I signed it up as you just saw on my screen here. Well, I can always come back and click on the protect workbook. I've already managed my credentials here and it pulls back up. All I have to do is go ahead and click OK or click cancel and go protect workbook to restrict access. In either case, it's going to take me eventually to this screen here where I can go ahead and check the box and restrict permissions to this workbook and then down below I can go, go ahead and enter those people that I want to be able to have access to this workbook either the read option or the change option 
For example, if I just want to assign somebody to have the read-only access to this workbook, I will get their email address and then click OK, except I have more options I want to show you. So again, only Bob, who has this email account, who signed up for uh, Windows Live ID, after I go ahead and click OK and restrict access, so nobody else but Bob can actually open it up, and of course me, he can only read it. And then there's those who can only change it, and again, it defines it down here. So more options up here, I can uh, change it. There's me, I've got full control. When I hover over the drop-down arrow, I can change myself to read only or change, but I want full control. Of course, I can update Bob here. And instead of just reading or changing, as you saw in the previous window, I can also give him full control, which I won't do. So let me go ahead and change him to change only. And so now he can make changes to the workbook. He can't overwrite the original. He can just do a save as and make a copy of this workbook. And then I can say additional permissions here is that this workbook expires on, let's do the 31st. So he no longer has access to this after December 31st. I can say he can print the content. If I leave it unchecked, he can't print anything. Of course, if I want to be able to let them copy content inside of this workbook to another workbook and access content through another program, if I don't check these, they won't be able to do it. And of course, users can request with my email down here additional uh, permissions from these. So if Bob later on goes, gosh, I can't do anything to this workbook, he can request and send me an email and I can go ahead and change that to full control if necessary. When I'm finished, just go ahead and click OK. And a couple of things happen. First of all, up here I got the message bar where it says permission is currently restricted, only specifies users can access this content. You can click on change permission and go ahead and make changes here. There's Bob, he used to be in read, now he's down to change. Click cancel. And then you also have this little icon down below. When you hover over it, it says this document contains a permission policy. So in order for them to access this, they have to have the permissions. When I click on it, again it brings it up just the same as if I clicked it up here on the message bar. Close. And if I come up here and click on the home tab, you editing tools available so I can come in here make it bold unbold it format the font to a different color but when I'm finished what I can do is mark this as final and what that does is that it disables all the editing tools so if I come up here and click on the office logo button come down to prepare go to mark as final the workbook will be marked as final then save click OK and it lets me know that this document's been marked as final to indicate that editing is complete and this is the final version of the document. And then it says, hey look, you can notice or recognize that the document is marked final when you look down here in the status bar and you'll find an icon. When I click OK, down below right here it says marked as final. So when I come up here I don't have any access to clicking on any of the formatting buttons. In fact, on any of the tabs up at the top of the ribbon. Let me go back to home. However, if I want to have access to all these formatting options again, then just come up here, click on the Office logo button, come down to Prepare again, and go back to Mark as Final. You can see the icon's already highlighted or outlined in orange here. If I click on it again, boom, it gets rid of it down below on the status bar, and I have access now to all the formatting buttons here. The whole purpose of that is not to actually password or protect it at the strictest level. It just means, hey, when somebody opens this up, I don't want them to mess with the format. It's marked as final, but of course they can always undo that. So with anything, there's certain levels of trust. There's a trust where you have to have a password, but maybe you don't trust everybody with passwords, so you want to be able to use the Restrict Access feature in Excel, which is managed through uh, the Windows Live ID accounts here over the servers, and also marking this as final so nobody can actually do some formatting on it. Just hope that they don't know to come up here and go ahead and unmark the final preparation for the document, and if so, then maybe that's a level of trust we don't even want to go there, or give people access to by not giving them access to this workbook. And of course, when I'm finished, I can come up here, change permissions, don't restrict it anymore, click OK. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.